The one-handed backhand is arguably one of the most beautiful shots in tennis, and yet it is so misunderstood. In today's video, I'm going to share with you the technical components that you can focus on to help you hit a beautiful one-handed backhand. My name is Jeff Salzenstein. I'm the founder of Tennis Evolution, and I'm really excited to bring you Dominic Team's one-handed backhand today. I'm gonna to break it down for you so you can understand it and apply the principles that he's using to improve your backhand. It's no accident that Dominic Team has one of the best one-handed backhands in the world, and we can learn a lot from him. So I wanna study this backhand right now and help you understand what you can do to take your backhand to the next level. So let's watch it in real time. Absolutely unloads on that backhand. That happened to be a low backhand, which we're gonna talk about a little bit here. So the first thing I want you to notice is the ready position. We can't see if he was in a forehand uh, grip before this shot. He might have already changed towards a backhand grip here because he knew it was coming to his backhand. But what I really like is how in the ready position, his arms are relaxed. They're not stiff. I see a lot of players with stiff arms. I see coaches teaching players to have the racket out in front more. These arms are bent and relaxed. It's all about relaxation first, taking tension out of the body. Now, the second thing I want you to notice is that his offhand is on the uh, throw to the racket. That's going to be his guide hand to help him make his first move. And the racket tip is up. So this is great for a ready position. Arms are close to the body, arms are bent, racket tip is up, off, off hand is on the throat of the racket. The next thing I want you to pay attention is, to is his first move. So I want you to see how the racket tip stays up with his first move as he turns his shoulders. Absolutely fantastic. We don't see a lot of players doing it at that level. He's got nice space. He's not too stiff, but he he's also has enough space away from his body to unload on this ball. Now, the third thing that I want you to pay attention to is the height that he takes this ball, ball at. Now, you might say, oh my gosh, he's taking it at knee height. Did the ball drop? No, this was a low ball hit. If you see where it bounces here, it doesn't get higher than his knees. So he's taking it at the perfect height. I see a lot of players get a ball like this and it will really be dropping by the time they get at, up to it. In fact, they'll be behind the baseline and the ball will be dropping down to the court and they have to reach for the ball. So he does a great job with his technique and his movement, of course, of getting it at the right height. Now related to that, we're talking about contact because this is the height. Notice his offhand. So his offhand at contact is there for balance. It hasn't started separating. I see some players really separate their hands too early. Now he does bring the arm back when he's done right here, but at contact, notice that off arm. It's there for balance. I just love that. The fourth thing that I wanna mention is his body position. Look how still his body stays long after the ball is gone. So as the ball is approaching, his knee is bent, and as he hits, his knee stays bent. This is something that I struggled with is I had a tendency to pull up on my backhand too early. That's what I see a lot of players do. He keeps his knee bent on this low ball for a long time. He still, he starts to straighten it at the finish of the swing. So what I love about this is right at contact and after contact, his body's not over rotating. Yes, he's opening his shoulders, but he's not completely square to the net yet. He, the ball is gone and he still has the Adidas logo facing towards us. So he's really keeping his body still and his head down. He's not popping his head up. This is absolutely fantastic body awareness and body control. That's the fourth concept that I want to mention in this video. Now the fifth one is related to extension and finish. This is something, this is probably the biggest thing that I see players struggle with is the finish. I rarely see club players with a straight dominant arm at the end. I see their arm is bent, but look at how straight his arm is and look how much range of motion and extension he gets. 
Now, this hand does not go as high, his finish hand does not go as high as I normally would teach it on a regular backhand. But remember, this is a low backhand. So on a low backhand, you're going to keep your hand a little bit lower. He still goes up high on his backhand. I mean, this hand is way above his head and I rarely see players get their hand this high. So I love the extension. I love the straight arm. And I love the height of his hand hitting through that ball. And then it, and then it comes down afterwards. Now, as I mentioned earlier, one of the biggest problems that players have with their finish is this arm is bent. And if it is bent, you need to take a look at can your body physically straighten that arm? Because I've told players time and time again, you need to straighten that arm in the finish and they still don't do it. It could be muscle memory. Technically, it doesn't work for, for that player. Or it could be a restriction in the body. So you have to check that. But what I would do, if I had a one-handed backhand, and I wanted to hit it like Dominique Team. I would model the steps that I'm talking about in this video. I'd make sure that my first, my ready position looks more like this with the racket tip up and the arms relaxed. Step number one. Step number two, I'd make sure my racket tip is up and it stays up as I take the racket back. Step number three, I'd make sure I get the ball at the right height, that I don't let the ball drop. Okay, that's at the perfect height for this height of the ball. Step number four, I keep my body really still long after the ball is gone, so my body and my head stay still. And step number five, I'd make sure my arm is straight, my hand is high and away from my body so that I can get maximum extension and power. It's no surprise that Dominique Team has one of the best backhands in the world, and guess what? You can develop your backhand into a weapon if you focus on these five areas. Now, what I'd love for you to do, go ahead and leave a comment down below and let me know on a scale of one to 10 how you're doing in these five areas. Ready position, first move, height of the ball, body awareness, body stillness, and your extension and finish. If you can honestly assess on a scale of one to five how you're doing in these five areas and start chipping away at each one, you can dramatically improve in the weeks, months, and years to come. If you enjoyed this lesson and got a lot of value out of it, go ahead and leave a comment or question below. We'll be sure to answer it. And make sure you give us a thumbs up because if you like this video, it helps our channel grow. And we want more tennis players all over the world to benefit. Now, before you go today, I've got a special opportunity for you. I'm offering you a free membership. That's right, no strings attached. 21 free lessons, and you can study all things backhands, forehands, serves, injury prevention, mental toughness, strategy, and much, much more. And all you have to do is click somewhere in this video or down below this video, click that link, get signed up to get the free Tennis Evolution membership. No credit cards required. I just wanna provide a lot of value for you so I can help your tennis and you get to the next level.